Yeah. Yep. Do you, do you have a preference? It doesn't matter. Either. Okay. I'm going to go make a copy of this so we can look at it together. Sure. You got on the order and food and all that? I'm not going to on order it. I'm good. You have to go? I'm fine right now. Thank you. Though. All right. So what I'm going to do is, we have a whole bunch of people coming in, you know, from your neighborhood. Somebody saw something. Somebody knows where these kids are. And I keep saying the kids. I'm sorry. The kids in your life. Um, and I should say, um, I work these quite a bit. And so tonight, if I make one of those mistakes when I say kids instead of your wife and kids, I apologize. It's, we work it a lot. And so I apologize if something comes out wrong or um, anyway. So. I know you're going through a lot, so we're not going to keep you here all night. Can we go through this? Yep. So, okay. Let's see, 148, you're detecting the visitor. What does that mean? So the doorbell has a, uh, a camera on it when you get up to a certain proximity, and when you ring it, it detects the visitor. Okay. People are already distracting me there. Oh. Um, so, in fact, you know, why don't we do this? Um, so, I work a lot of stuff like this in bank robberies, and when I talk to a, you know, a witness at a bank robbery, sometimes I find it best for them to just say, uh, I just say, uh, tell me what happened, get it all out, and then once you get it out, let's go over it, okay? So just get it all out as far as this. Tell me exactly what you remember, and I'll take notes about where we can go. Okay. So this 1.48 a.m. Let me switch chairs. Okay. Because when they come knocking, do you need more water? No, I brought you the beer. Oh, All right. Alright. So, 1.40 a.m., doorbell detects the visitor. So, when we were um, over at the neighbor's house that, the next day, we were looking at his camera as well, and it didn't show anybody walking up to the driveway, which is kind of weird. That's one reason I put that on there. Because it showed Nicole dropping her off. But nobody actually walking up to the house. It was kind of weird. But she was in the house. Okay. And, so, and what time are we talking? This is still 1:48. Okay. So, uh, 2 a.m. Shannon gets in the bed with me. 4 a.m. That's when my alarm goes off for work, and I'm seeing this get dressed, brush my teeth, everything I do upstairs. Okay. About uh, 4:15. That's when I get back, slide right in the bed next to her, and start having a conversation with her about having the house, the house up for sale and talking about it, like actually going proceeding with the separation. Okay. And obviously it gets pretty emotional, like we're talking about, you know, like we felt this the disconnection was there, like falling out of love and trying to stay together, maybe just for the kids' sake, but we're realizing that doing like our homework, it's not, most of the time that's not going to work. Yeah. And it gets pretty emotional because we have two beautiful kids and we have one on the way. So it's just a matter of like, it was very emotional. We were both crying. And at the end, we just said, you know, she said she was going to take the kids to her friend's house for the day. She would be back. Okay. And I said, okay. So, and so I went downstairs, made my protein shake. You know, the 5 a.m., that's when I did that. Mm -hmm. I had my lunchbox, I my oatmeal, chicken, took my water jug up. 5.15, I went outside, back my truck up and loaded up, had my book bag, my lunchbox, computer, water jug, my big, big clear container. I put big clear containers in my truck so it's easy just to pull out, pull in, just depending on what I'm going to use. My o ring kit, and I knew I was going to do some stuffing box rubbers that day, so I got some various open wrenches from my toolbox, and I know those would work better than the ones they would give me. Okay. Um, 5.30, that's when I went to work. Okay. And I had heard from Shanann for, to, for about two hours there, so at 7.40 I texted her and asked her if she could tell me where the kids were if she took them anywhere. Okay. Nothing. Okay. At 12, I texted her again and called me. Nothing. And then about 12.10 p.m., that's when my doorbell visitor, they read another visitor, and I was like, it popped up on my phone and it says it was Nicole. 
and I try to put it on the, my phone to see if, if like she's just trying to get in or whatnot. And I hear like she's on the phone trying to. I could t- I could hear her all through my phone saying she's trying to get this and then, so that's when I called her. Yeah, mm-hmm. I called her at 12:20. See what was going on. She told me that Shannon hadn't responded to any of her calls all day or any of her friends' calls all day. Okay. And that's that's kind of that's very strange. Just mm-hmm. because I mean she doesn't get back to me. That that's fine. You know, like yeah. she gets busy with kids, or whatever. Yeah. So if she's gonna get back to her people, like the people like she works with direct direct sales. Okay. So if she's gonna get back with them, that's strange. Is she the type to answer the phone? For them, yeah, uh-huh. like all the time. Okay. Yeah. It, for me, it's just like, hey, wait, <laughs> I'll see you later. Okay. Um, so about 12:40, uh, a few more efforts from the cold reacher while she's there, like outside the house. Mm-hmm. And at one o'clock, that's when I left, and I was like, all right, I'm on my way down there. Uh, two o'clock when I got home, because uh, they can't, they couldn't get in because the front door had a top latch to keep the kids in. Okay. Uh, Nicole and the police officer that was there. Okay. Oh, oh, right. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so they couldn't get in because top latch in the car, I mean, top latch on the front door was hinged, and the keypad on the outside did not work to get in the garage. So they had to wait till I got there so I can get the remote open. Okay. So that's when I got home. I opened the garage door and we went inside the house and looked everywhere. Shannon and Bella, Celeste, nowhere to be found. She has wedding rings on her nightstand, her phone's still on the couch, her purse is still there, the medicine for the kids is still there, the car and the car seat is still there, and there's no sign of them anywhere. Okay. Uh, three o'clock, um, the police officer, detective, uh, Bob, Bob Howard, right? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Bob uh, Howard. Uh, Bob Butcher's name every time. <laughs> I'm asking Nicole and I your questions about where she could have gone okay. or who she could be with. Um, at about four o'clock, the police officer that was there, he was checking the neighbor's security footage. Um, at five p.m., uh, the same same police officer, detective, and then sergeant, another officer, they showed up and they searched the house again. Um, about six o'clock, being called around to anyone that I could that that may know something, called hospitals and hotels. Uh, Seven thirty, my friend Nick and Men showed up to show support. And, and then on it, his friends is showing up. Uh, okay. So it's Lauren, Dave, Jeremy, and 10 o'clock is pretty much about laid down, but I didn't go to bed until probably like 2 a.m. just because he was in text and called all night. Okay. And I was just hoping that, I'm going to all the lights on in the house, I was just hoping that I'd get a knock on the door. But yeah. Nothing yeah. happened. Yeah, but nothing happened. What do you think happened? At first, I really thought maybe she was just at my house, just yeah. decompressing. Yeah. yeah. But after today, like with, the onslaught of all the cars, I mean, all the police cars, all the news, all the canine units, making me lean the other direction about someone took her. Okay. But this is, if someone took her, it would have to have been someone she knew because there's there's no sign of anything like being disturbed, broken. Mm-hmm. But like, that's the way I'm leaning now. At first I thought for real, she was just decompressing somewhere. Just, I mean, I thought she was safe, mm-hmm. even though everything in the house was left there. But now it's just after the day with the news crews and everything, it's just it feels more the other direction, and it's freaking me out because I have no idea where where they are. Okay. If you could think of anything that we could do to find them, what would it be? I mean. Everything that I've exhausted so far is like people that have car seats because she left the car seats and she would never just, I mean, I mean, Bella could sit in a, in a regular booster chair that because she's about that time. Mm-hmm. Celeste was, isn't quite there yet, but all the people that I know that have cars, I mean, they've contacted me. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless it's, I mean, there's, there's definitely a chance of somebody I don't know. Being a guy or a girl, I, don't, I mean, and she has plenty of friends through like direct sales that I, I've never met that could have a kid, could have a kid that she they, they come and just say, hey, you know, let's go, like just back up in the back, put them in, let's go. But I wouldn't have the name, I wouldn't know who they are, okay. and this is like that's what's driving me nuts. It's like when I told the news group, like if she's out there, like just come home. 
like who would have, if someone has her, or like not just has her, but she's at somebody's house and she's just decompressing, it's, it's time to come back. But now it, this is real. Okay. This has gone to a different level. Absolutely. Okay. Um, do you have an inkling of if it's good or bad? Yesterday I, I would have thought that she was safe and she was, it was good that she was in, that she would come home. Today it's more on the other side. It's, I don't think that she would let it get this far if she was just decompressing somewhere. I mean, she's not talking to anybody. As far as, I mean, and, and people that have reached out to me that I haven't talked to in like a year mm -hmm. that are friends with her. Mm -hmm. Like one of her like best friends, Mark Judy, lives in Florida. She works in the police department down in Miami. Mm -hmm. And she called me today. Like that's one of her friends who confided in. Oh, okay. So, and, and she hasn't heard nothing, anything? Nothing. And nobody's heard anything? Mm -hmm. Her parents, I mean, she doesn't like talking to her mom, but still she would, her mom calls her enough that she would at least answer once. Yeah. And if she's, I mean, I'm married, I know how it is. If she's hacked off at her husband, would she call her mom? She would call one of the friends that uh, contacted me. Okay. Uh, at least one of them, because she has she has a close knit group. Okay. But the fact that none of them know anything is very strange. One of them would have said something by now, seeing what this is escalated to. Is it possible that her close knit group? isn't close with you and there is somebody who knows where she is right now? I don't think so because, I mean, Nicole is a very, she's very close with Nicole. And the way Nicole is acting right now, as far as how emotional she is, yet, there's no way, like, she knows. What does that mean? There's no way, like, she would know, like, where she is if she knew. Oh, so you're saying if Nicole knew. Yeah, Nicole knew, like, the way she's acting right now, she's, she's as freaked out as I am. Okay. So there's no way like she would know where she is if she knew. Do you, know, do you know Nicole that well? I'm decent. I mean, she's been over at our house a good amount of time. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, and you've obviously spoken with Nicole. Oh yeah. And you don't have any weird feelings from her. No, she was she was there at the at the house. Okay. Like she was she was the one that was ringing the doorbell trying to see what was going on. Okay. Um, do you have a sense that the police here, or the FBI here, do you have a sense that we have a good enough list of people to call and check with? So, I know. I think so because I've I've gone through my entire phone. I know Nicole's gone through her entire phone. Amanda, anybody that lives here that knows Shannon, mm -hmm. they pretty much have the same contact list. Okay. So if there's somebody that's not on that on my phone, it's on theirs. Okay. Has somebody? Uh, I think the police have Nicole's or I'm sorry, your wife's phone, right? Yes. And I don't want to pronounce her name wrong. Shannon. 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 Okay. So the police have Shannon's phone. Yep. Yeah. Do they have your phones? Have they looked at your phones? I don't think so. Okay. Can I run that out and have them look real quick? Yeah. Okay. Is there any password I'm going to run into? Uh, 3307. 3307? 3387. 3387. Are there any other phones we can check? Mm -hmm. Okay. When they look at this, what's the best thing that they can do to, I don't know, to say, um, Look for these contacts. Look for this uh, Instagram. Look for this Snapchat. You know? So, like the only thing on here that I would say it's going to be weird because our contact list is the same. Oh, you guys have a shared contact. Yeah, like, like every Google. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like I'm like all the. Yeah. What drove me nuts is that when she like downloaded to the cloud, it multiplied or duplicated, duplicated, duplicated. Oh, I hate that. I hate that. Yeah, so this is the same person over and over. Ten people over. Oh, okay. So we have the same contact. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna run this out. Okay. Um, so three three oh three three eight seven three three eight seven, and I really want them to just not physically rip this phone apart, but really dive in. Okay. okay. And then, are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll just I'm gonna hand this off to somebody. Okay. All right. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Are there any other phones at home we can look at? That's all the ones I know of. It's hers and mine. Um, computers. There's a laptop that barely uses it. Okay. Where's the laptop? In the office. At home? Yep. Okay. Um, I think that I'm sorry that I'm catching up here. This always happens. Um, the police are the first people to get a call. 
Then when it's serious like this with missing kids, then a day or two later we come in and say, I'm sorry, I'm playing catch up. Mm -hmm. um, it's always good to repeat it though. So laptop at home, does it have a password? I don't think so. It might, but I've got one of users. Okay. Yeah, do, you have, do you have any idea? I, I have an idea of what the password could be. Okay. It's like 428 4915 capital S lowercase w. That's the main password. 428-4915-4615. And we'll probably just have you bring that in for us. Is that okay? Okay. So they don't have it now, the cops don't have it now. Okay. Um, so laptops. <sighs> Any other, um, like a Fitbit? Is there um, tablets? iPad, but I have not found that. Does she have it? I have not found it yet. She has it, but I haven't seen it in the house. Okay. So possibly she has it? Possibly. Oh, okay. When did you buy that? Ooh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and so is it a full on iPad like yep. um that you could use it to like um a Wi Fi. Wi Fi, could you use it to navigate to an address? You could text from it. Oh, okay. So then if it's possible and she has it and she's somewhere hurt or somewhere that we can't find her, she can't in other words, could we somehow track that? Does that GPS? It has to be sent to the Wi-Fi for it to actually. Oh, so it's not like a phone then. It's a no. Okay. She has a, a watch as well, but I've not found that. She has a, like a Apple Watch. Apple Watch. Okay. I've Do you know where that is? I've not found it. It's not, okay. it's not on the charger. And it's not at your house, but you can tell. Okay. Um, do you think the password for the iPad is the same? No, it'd probably be two three eight five. Two three eight. Is that a column for her? Yes. Anyone on a four digit it is. Okay. What about for her Apple Watch? Two three eight five. Two three eight five. Okay. I don't have an Apple Watch. Is that one where you have to unlock it usually? Okay. And does she usually have a password? Mm hmm Okay. Um, on her phone it's different because it's six digits, but okay. What's your phone? It's gonna be O one thirty one nineteen. Is that a birthday or something? Oh, the next baby. Oh, two day, two day. Okay. I'm sorry, you were right. Um, so if she's, and again, this is probably something that the cops in the other room know about. If she's due in January, she's four or five months pregnant? And she was 14, 15 months. Okay. So you guys know the sex of the baby? You are not going to tell anybody yet. But you do know it? Mm -hmm. Okay. But she knows it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's finish this, and then we'll get into um, more of this. Okay. So how else can we track her? Does she have another phone that you know? That's the only phone I've ever seen her use. Okay, what's your phone number? 910-850-3286. Okay. Um, so, you know, strap on your CSI hat. Uh, you can imagine the guy has some pretty cool tricks and toys and everything. Is there anything you can think of that we should be doing that we're Honestly, everything that I saw that it was like, it was, it took me on a whirlwind. I didn't think all that was going to happen. So that everything that happened today, I thought you guys were like spot on. Okay. Um, is there anything that a friend has said? Oh, has the FBI done this? Has a, well, you probably didn't know the FBI was involved until no. an hour ago. Yeah. Um, is there any good ideas that your friends have had saying, man, they're going to try this, they're going to do this? A lot of people have asked about Amber Alerts, but I'm not sure like why that, I'm not sure like, I'm sure, you know, Amber Alerts have to deal with like, all right, if you know someone has taken a kid, but if the last person you saw was the mom, yeah. and you'll think hey, everybody's gone. Yeah. That's probably why Amber Alerts not really yeah. used in this respect. Well, they did a, they did a press statement. So, um, Amber Alerts are a little bit different. Um, one thing that helps Amber, Alert, Amber Alerts is cars. You know, when you're driving down the freeway and you say, missing person, look for this car. What car do we look for? That's the only car she has is the one that left in the garage. A Lexus? Mm -hmm. And that's what you drove here tonight? Yep. Okay. Do you have any other cars that you drive? I just my work truck. Okay. Um, Lexus. Does the, oh, the Lexus is here. Okay. How could she have left the house? The only way she could have left the house. So my picture up, but it would have to have been from the back. Because it's the camera in the front where the neighbor, the way it faces the driveway, it would have picked that up. Only thing it picked up was me leaving at like 526. Okay. I didn't know. Is it your camera? It's neighbor's camera. Oh, did he tell you? Yeah, we, all, we were all over there watching it with okay. the officer. Okay. All right. It just showed me loading up my truck. Oh. Um, 
Is it on all the time? His camera's on all the time, yep. Okay. And all it's always you leaving? Yep. Did it didn't show her coming home? I didn't show her walking in, no. Okay. But she she was in the house when yeah, I obviously. So I, I was just like a... I'm just trying to think. So the camera, is it possible that it doesn't catch everything? Uh, the motion detector? It, from what I saw, I think, like, he showed me other, like, examples, but it was picking up, like, minuscule things uh -oh. in there. Like, it was like, it didn't take much to, like, just get it started recording. Oh, so it probably is a motion detector then? It's yeah. It's start points. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So then there's his camera and your security system. And my doorbell camera right there. Your doorbell camera. And the only thing that was strange about mine that morning was that when I left, it said garage door two remained open. When you left? Were you parked in the garage when you left? I pulled out and, I hit the, and it said, I thought it shut. Oh, okay. And it said main garage door two open while, when I went back and looked at all the history. And Nick Nicole said that it was shut when she got there. Okay. But it said it was, because on my, on my notifications, It'll say something's left open, but it won't say when it's shut. Oh, so you got a notification that was open mm -hmm. after having, after when you thought you shut it? Yep. Okay. All right. Next, I looked back and saw it shutting. Okay. Um, kids, do they have any security little watches? Mm -hmm. You know, something they have the call them button? Nothing like that? Nothing like that, yeah. No iPads? Mm -hmm. How old are they? Four and three. Oh, they're pretty young. Okay. Anything else you can think of? I don't know, I feel like we've exhausted like every option, every friend that we know okay. that could have like that could have helped her. Okay. Um so we talked about her decompressing a few times. Where would you do that? She would have to go to her friend's house to do that. She wouldn't just go anywhere, not with the kids. Oh, okay. I've checked if she had if she had any cash on her. I'm not sure like how much she would have had on it. She doesn't, usually doesn't carry much cash. And the okay. cash she had in her wallet was from the coal the previous day. From who? From coal. Oh, okay. She told me that was the cash she gave her when we saw when we found her purse. For what? No, that was, I'm not sure if she didn't tell me. Okay. But um, that was the only cash she had in her wallet. And is that still at the house you said? Yeah. Okay. So is her license in the law? Yeah. So she's got no cash that we know of, no license, no phone. And think about the clothes in the closet, the hamper, the drawers. That makes you think. She packs some boots. She's going to the mountains. Like she has so many clothes in that in that closet. Like it's, it'd be hard to really tell if she took a little amount. Okay. I mean, if she took a big amount, it'd be pretty obvious. But like a little amount, it would never. Know. Okay. All right. She so has like say like that whole wall, and then the bottom, and the other side. Okay. If you take this room, it's about the size of. It. A woman with a lot of clothing? You don't say? No. Okay. Shoes, anything about shoes that you think? She has a whole shoe closet. <laughs> so there's nothing obvious that screams at you. She's mm -hmm. preparing for this type of activity. Okay. Um, and the girls, the kids' clothes too. There was a, enough that was there that I saw missing. Okay. So, um, all right. So I know it's hard to talk about. Um, you mentioned that there was a hard conversation the two of you had about uh, separation, your marriage and separation. Now that you've had a little bit of time to think, looking back on that conversation, um, can you connect the dots between both of you being upset and crying, and here we are, and now she and the kids are gone? What do you, what do you think about? I think about like, did I cause this? Like, did I make her feel like she needed to leave? And like, did she really feel like the things she was saying? Did she really feel the same? Did she really feel like, all right, the disconnection? Did she really feel all that, or she was just saying it? Like, maybe like us falling out of love. Did that was that really registering her at that point in time, or did it register after I left to go to work? And then she was like, you know, I'm just gonna leave. It's like, I don't know, because she laid back down. Okay. She was still there when I left. Okay. But like, maybe she sat there and, and thought about it. Like, do I really need to stay here right now? Okay. If he doesn't love me, maybe I should just go. Can you really get into that conversation with me? And what I want to know is, um, you obviously have a very deep relationship with her since your wife, but it's going to be easy for me to listen to what was said 
and made her think that there are some clues about maybe she did just lay down and cry a little bit longer and something happened to her. Or maybe she did get frustrated and she left. So let's, can we recreate that conversation? Mm-hmm. So tell me what happened. So I crawled back in bed. So sorry, let's start from, mm-hmm. um, she gets home late at night. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll start from that point. Okay, so she got home about 2 a.m. And were you already home? Oh yeah, I was, I was passed out. Okay. Yeah, so like I, I, could, I felt her get into bed. I don't know that by about 4 a.m. That's when my alarm, <clears throat> that's when my alarm went off to go to work. Okay. That's when I got ready and everything. So she gets in at two, alarm goes off at four, okay? Mm-hmm. And, and you were sleeping that whole time? Oh yeah. Okay, so the conversation hadn't started? No. Okay. Well, so about when my alarm goes off, that's when, after I get ready for work, I call back in bed and have that conversation. So you wake up at four, mm-hmm. from at four, then what, until you start the conversation? I get dressed, get my, get my clothes on, brush my teeth, yogurt, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Shower? Okay. Charlotte. Yeah, back to four. Okay, where are you from? I work in the oil and gas. Okay. So then it doesn't matter if you go to work without a shower. Okay. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> All right. It's going to be bad anyway. Yeah. So then you wake up, you get ready. I'm sorry I interrupted you. You're fine. Um, so, then, so then what time are we talking about when you're ready to talk with her? About 4.15 or so. Okay. And so she was asleep from the time she got home from 2 to 4 mm-hmm. or 4.15. You wake up at 4, 4.15, you're ready. Okay, and then 4.15, you start talking. Mm-hmm. Why do you talk at 4.15 in the morning? I felt like I needed to talk to her face to face. Cause okay. like, I wanted to say something. Much, um, I, I, like when she was in Arizona, like, I didn't want to do it through a text. I didn't want to do it through a call. I was like, I got back in bed. I was like, I needed to, I needed to talk to her about this. Cause she had told me, she had told me like when she was, when she was going to fly back, that she wanted to get up with me so she could take a shower because she wanted to get there for of me. What do you mean when she got back? When she flew back in. From Phoenix? Yeah. Okay. So she told you, let's have a talk? No, she wanted to get up with me so she could take a shower to get the airport off her because she was like, oh. her flight was delayed. Oh, okay. Her flight was supposed, was supposed to get in 11, but okay. it didn't to 11. Okay. And so did she call you or did she text you? I think there was a call okay. on that one. All right. And so at 415, what happens? That's when I crawled back in bed and I, was, I woke her up. Okay. And then I proceeded to talk to her about how I was feeling, about how I felt like what's been going on with us for the last, what, what she's seen in like the last six weeks, because we were, she was in North Carolina and I was mm-hmm. down there just the last week. But from what, just being apart and just like figuring out who people are. Mm-hmm. Like the best, honestly, like the best way for people to really find out who they are is to spend time apart. I agree. And just kind of just like, you need to see yourself. Well, and then on the last week, that's when I went back to North Carolina and I was there for the last week there. Okay. And when we were together, we could feel like it, was, it wasn't there, that spark. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of cliche, but that spark sure. wasn't there anymore. Mm-hmm. And on that night, I told her, I woke that morning, early that morning, mm-hmm. I told her like the disconnection is, it's there, like it's not going away. Like the connection we had when, in the beginning, mm-hmm. it's not there anymore. It's okay. like I don't feel like the love we have is there anymore. Okay. And it's just like I don't feel like. I mean, if we want to stay together for the kids, I'm not sure if that's going to work. Mm-hmm. Like bringing another. That's what you told her. Yes. Okay. Like having another baby bring us this relationship. Do you think this is going to work? Mm-hmm with us being together or separation, I think is going to be the best possible route for us. And that's when like all the crying and everything proceeded. And it was just, it was very hard just, just to talk, talk about that. Mm-hmm. But I needed to do it face to face. Okay. And I needed like, I needed to see her face like while I did it. I couldn't uh, text, phone, whatever. I needed to be face to face and be able to see her and know that she was going to be at least reciprocating back to me. Oh, what did she say? She said that it was, I mean, it was, she wants, she wanted to kind of work on it, Mm -hmm. but if that's the way I was feeling, then she respects that. Okay. And she said that most of the time when you have kids and you have a relationship where people like, they don't don't love each other more, they fall out of love, there's connection, that having kids even bringing a new baby into the into the equation 
doesn't always work as well as keeping like you know the couple happy and the kids happy. Like it almost is like better if right two are mm -hmm. on a different different sides. Yeah, and you don't want to spend your whole marriage disliking each other and faking it for the kids. Yeah, no, that's that's one thing. Okay. That is an accurate. Oh, yeah, that, that's that's totally accurate. Okay. I mean, you, you don't want to be you don't want to be the people parading around with like a mask on when the kids are around, and then when the kids go to sleep, you just go your separate ways. Okay. Like that's what I don't want. Okay. And that's why that's why we talk that's why we're talking about that separation that night. Okay. And that's why that's why I got so emotional right there. Okay. Emotional for you too. Oh yeah, I was bawling my eyes out. Okay. Um. So then, as a result, of, so then, how long did that conversation last? It lasted so about four fifteen when we started. We talked about the house as well. Okay. What did you say about the house? Like we needed to sell the house. Like there's no way like we can stay in this house and have another kid mm -hmm. and be able to just keep everything afloat. Mm -hmm. And she's like, "Well, where do you want to move to?" I was like, "Well, we can move to Brighton. We can move to the North area." Kind of, yeah. Okay. okay. So we can move to Brighton, we can move to Vermont, we can move like, you know, wherever. Mm -hmm. Somewhere that's cheaper. Okay. And she was like, well, because she had already contacted the uh, realtor the week before through an email. Oh. To, to see like what she thought. And that's when like, I, I actually contacted Ann that day. Like, it was like, pretty much five about eight o'clock that day. Who's Ann? The realtor. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's her, you know, like, if we can get the ball rolling. Like to see what you thought. So you said your wife called a week before to the realtor? Emailed her. Okay. So then this conversation early in the morning wasn't a shock to either of you, it was a surprise. It was the next step yeah. in the long conversation you have mm -hmm. to have leading yeah. up to. Okay. Yeah, it was, this was not like a just like way up like a big bang theory yeah. type thing. It was just yeah. like this was Okay. It was it, that's why it was just an emotional conversation. Sure. Like, because it wasn't just like a like come out of nowhere left field type of thing like we knew like something wasn't we knew about what we want to do with the house we knew like what what's going on with it like we knew something was is it accurate to say that then the time when you were away from each other when she was in North Carolina the time when she was in Arizona maybe the two of you knew that that could have been time you were talking and so when you finally get together it's we can't wait another second we're going to talk mm -hmm. is that right okay and tell me the term. No, no, you're, you're right. Okay, so then uh, the conversation starts at 4.15. You talk about each other and your marriage. You talk about the house. Mm -hmm. anyway. And that's when the conversation ends and we talk about her. She says she's going to take her friends or take her and her friends to uh, take her and the kids to her friend's house. Who's who's which friend? That's what she did. She did not say. That's so what she did say, I'm taking the kids to a friend's house. Yeah. Are you sure she said that? Yes. You're positive? Yes. Okay. That's good. Um, now we're back to the blowing out steam yeah. probability, which we like, right? Yeah, that's what I like. Okay. Um, so let's, you know, if we're going to play the DVR, let's rewind five minutes. So we're at the house. You're talking about the house. You're saying this isn't going to work with the kid. We're going to sell this house. Then how do you remember what led to her talking about the kids? As far as like taking to a friend's house? Yeah. Like what, what conversation did you guys have? Well, that's when I rolled out of bed, and that's when she she pretty much she told me like I'm taking the kids to a friend's house today, and I'll be back later. Are you sure she said she'll be back yeah, later? On a scale of one to ten, how how positive? That's a ten. A ten. Yeah. Okay. So she said I'm going to take the kids to a friend's house, but I'll be back later. Why? That so I just told her. That doesn't make sense though, because she know. you'd be at work, why would she have to leave? That's the thing. Like, why? I'm not sure why she wanted to go somewhere. Okay. But that's what she wanted. Like maybe she didn't want to be in that house after what we were just talking Fair about. You just talked about it, yeah. That's no longer in mentally, emotionally her house then. Uh -huh. Okay. So let's focus on I'm gonna take the kids to my friend's house. What does that mean? Hopefully it's someone that she trusts. Hopefully it's someone that she knows pretty well and hopefully maybe they have a kid that Bella and Celeste can play with. But you have no idea who that would be? Because we have exhausted all of them from all those people. Okay. Is that, does that surprise you? Because I don't know your wife, but maybe that's something that's in her wheelhouse. Does that surprise you that she did, did said that and did that? It doesn't surprise me that she went somewhere. Like, she said she was, it might, could have been a play date. Okay. But she was very vague in the fact that she just said she was going to a friend's house. Okay. I didn't say who. Okay. 
That's why I text her, like, if you can tell me, like, where the kids are. What time did you text her? That was 7... 7.40. Okay. And no work, no work tomorrow, obviously. No. Okay. So then we're at the... Sh I'm going to take the kids. I'm going to go to a friend's house. You sure she didn't say I'm going to take them somewhere to a hotel or to mm -hmm. a... Oh, there's no... There's no... Off of the said to a friend's house. And not just someone's house, but a friend's house. Yeah, because, like... If it, if it was a hotel, I would have definitely asked the question, like, why are you going to a hotel? Yeah. Okay. That, that wouldn't, uh, yeah. Where can we look to find friends that you might not know about? Honestly, Facebook's the only place. Facebook? Because okay. that's the one she frequents. Okay. That's the only place. What's her Facebook account? Where are you using it? It's the Shenanawas. Just regular Shenanawas? Well, they, they have access on her phone. S H A N A N N A N N, and so they can. I think they can log into the phone, right? I think they're in her phone, right? Oh yeah, they can just gotta hit the icon, and it's right there. So it's right there. They can. They can, they can do whatever it. they want, and they can. Okay. All right. It doesn't take much. It's always logged in. Okay. Um. Doesn't she do something online? Doesn't she have an online presence or something? It's with Thrive, the direct sales business. Is that, is that her job? Yeah, and so it's called what? Thrive. Yeah, the company's called the Bell, but the what? the company's called the Bell. Lavelle. Yeah, L E hyphen B E L. L E hyphen B E L. Okay. Yeah, but the the product's called Thrive. Okay. What is it? It's a probiotics, prebiotics, uh, vitamins, and minerals. It's okay. Fun. It's all plant based stuff. It's it's work, works very well. Di dietary supplementary. Okay. And what does she do for that? She's a promoter. Okay. Sales? Yes. Okay. Is this a, um, you know, her thrive? Is this like, do you try to sell it personally to people you know? Okay, so she doesn't have a storefront that she works at? No, no, it's all cloud based. Okay, home based. She yeah, work from home. Well, she can work anywhere. And so, where would be a list of contacts at Thrive that we could go start talking to people? Oh, we, we've already gave them all to them. Like everybody that she contacts through Thrive, they have them in that the phone. Have that? Yep. In that phone? Mm -hmm. Through what? An app? No, just like all the people that she contacts throughout the day. Okay. Like from Addie and Sam, and they're all in there. Addie and Sam, who are they? Addie Maloney, one of her uh, leaders back east. Uh, oh, okay. Sam Paisley, another leader. Someone supporting her sales. Yeah. Yeah. What about people who, because she's in sales, what about customers she tries to reach out to she doesn't even know? How does she do that? Messenger. You mentioned strangers? They, she, either it's her Facebook post, like page is, uh, I guess it's public. Okay, so she has friends on friends Facebook yeah. that might someday think that they want Thrive, they can reach her. Mm -hmm. How else does she do it? It's mainly just through Facebook. To Facebook. Yeah, like if she has any, she might do it on Instagram. Everyone's cool. She'll like sync them both, so that okay. goes to both. But Facebook and what was it? Instagram. Yeah. And what's your Instagram username? I have no clue. You have no idea. No, it might just be Shanann Thrives. Shanann with a uh, underscore and Thrives. Okay. So you don't do Thrive? I do. Uh, she kind of runs it. Okay. Do you do it separately from her then? It's it's a different team, but okay. I'm under her. Okay. Like I signed, it's like she signed me up under her. Okay. So whatever I do helps her. Right. Okay. What else are we not thinking? Of? So let's continue with I'm gonna go to my friend's house. Then what happens? That's when I go downstairs, uh, make my protein shake, get the lunch, everything ready. Because you're not going back to bed at this point? No. Okay. Just, I gotta go to work now. And this is somewhere near 5? 5. 5.15. Okay. And then that's when I go out, get my truck, load everything in it, and 5.30, I'm okay. for about what the neighbors think, so about 5.26, I'm gone. Okay. And she's still at the house now? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, because I, I mean, she never came back downstairs. Um, and explain your house to me. Yeah, do you leave through downstairs? I'll leave, uh, yeah, go downstairs and you leave through the garage. So then this conversation happened upstairs? Yes. In the master bedroom? Yes. Okay. Um, and you're sure she didn't come down? Like, once I was in the garage, I was in the garage, so I didn't see anything after that. Did you see her car in there? Yes. Okay, and you left when her car was in there? Yep. So it's clear she's in there. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to determine if there's any other time she could have disappeared. And then, so from 5.30 then, what? That's when I, I went to work. Okay. 
and seven four is the next time I text her. How much text her then? I was I hadn't heard from her and I was just seeing if she knew like where if or just seeing where she went. Texted Shanann, right? The yep. Shanann? Yep. And asked if she could tell me where she was taking the kids out. Okay. So at this point it's two hours later and you're thinking, I wonder where she's going. Yeah. Okay. And is that text on your phone? Yes. Okay. Uh, then all the way, what happened between 7.40 and noon? No, I was working. I was outside working. Okay. Uh, noon, Texas, she had to call me. And that's when you got your phone too? Okay. 12.10, doorbell visitor. That's when Nicole was at the door, at the door and it pinged on my phone. Okay. What's she doing there then? Oh, then 10 minutes later, you called Nicole to see what was going on. And she told me she couldn't get a hold of Shannon either. And that her shoes were next, whose shoes, Shanann's shoes, yep. were next to the door, and her car was in the garage, next to the door, inside or outside? Inside. Okay. There's like a little, like a little small rectangular window next to the door. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're right in there. Do you, does that mean anything to you that Shanann's, or her shoes are always by the door? Yeah. Okay. So, when you come in the house, does she usually come in the front door? Most of it, unless she drives in. Okay. Then she goes into the garage. Okay. But that was just from the previous night when she came in. Oh, okay. So then, let's think about this for a minute. If she comes in, drives in with, what's the, your other car, Lexus? Yep. She drives in the Lexus, comes in. She comes in the garage door that way, and she drives in the garage. Yeah. But since Nicole dropped her off that previous night, she came in the front door. Oh, someone else is driving. The yeah. Lexus is already there. The Lexus is already there. Okay, so then that makes sense. Yeah. You, you see what we're trying to do? We're trying to be like, did she walk out or was she taken out, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so then it makes sense that her shoes are still right there. Mm -hmm. But she's obviously not wearing those shoes. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Go for you. If you weren't efforts by Nicole to reach her, how do you know? Because that's when I was, she was still at the front door. And oh, I was, I was oh to reach her at the front door. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 1 p.m. I'm now on my way home to check on my family. Uh, is that just because you're worried with, based on the conversation? Yeah. Nicole, had the police contact you by then? No. Okay. Two, but, I arrived. I'm sorry, go ahead. But uh, Nicole says she was probably going to call the cops. Okay. All right. Now, so it sounds like Nicole's pretty worried. Mm -hmm. More worried than you. Well, so I, I, once, once she couldn't get anything out of her and nothing was going on in the house, I was like, all right, I got to go home. But it sounds like Nicole was more worried. Yeah, because like, most of like if she doesn't text me, like I understand that. Okay. Like sometimes that happens. Okay. But for her not to get back to her okay. group, direct fail group, okay. that was very unorthodox. Okay. And you had a pretty tough morning with her. Yeah. So she's again decompressing. Yeah. She's in. So it's okay that she's not texting you maybe, but you're gonna come home and check just yeah. in case. Mm -hmm. But Nicole's freaking out. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. And, and I'm I'm walking myself through this. You tell me. No, no, that's not what happened. No, I mean like she, she like for her not to get back to her friends like that. Like that's not normal because like she'll get like tons of text messages throughout the day from okay. direct sales. All right. Like if she doesn't get back to me, I I just assume that she's busy. Okay. I'm now on my way home to check my family. To get my eyes home, open the garage door. How? I have my uh, uh button. Okay. It's in your truck? Yeah. Okay. And get inside the house. Shannon, Bella, and Celeste. Who are Bella and Celeste? That's what my kids. Okay. Oh, are not in the house. Oh, okay. Shannon's wedding ring is in on her right hand. hand. Her phone is on the couch. Her purse is still here. The medicine for the kids is still here. The car with the car seats are still here. There is no sign of them anywhere. Frederick police officer and detectives are asking Nicole and I questions about where she could have gone or who she could be with. How did that go? I mean, we try to go through from what we could have, what we could gather, like where she could have gone. Okay. As far as like what we saw in the house, it didn't really make, make sense. Okay. So that's where that's where just like call it, start look through the phone and just kind of call around. And once we found the phone and Nicole knew what the passcode was, just kind of load it up and see what what transpired and obviously there was like 50 something text messages that came that like popped through. Okay. All right. Because the phone was off. Okay. What do you mean the phone was off? It was off. When you found it was off off? Off. Was the battery then? No. Why are you making that? I have no clue. Like why was it off and why was it not with her? Were your 
right? Because you're saying that she does a ton of texting and marketing and sales and calling certain people back. Okay. How would it turn off? You'd have to turn it off. Okay. Because it wasn't dead. It was like 50% or so, I think. Are you sure? Okay. And it was on the couch? Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? Oh, usually it's not right by her nightstand. Okay. That's usually where it always is. Nightstand in the bedroom? Yeah. Okay. Anything else about that? No, that, that is weird that it's, it was sitting like on the couch cushion, like right there. Okay. So, can we back up a tiny bit? You come home, no one has been in the house? No. Okay. No one could be in the house, is that right? Yeah, unless you had a garage door. Okay. Her. And that's how you got in. So, I got in. So, at this point, you get there. Are the police there at this point? Yes. So, you, the police, Nicole, that's it? Her son. Her son. What's her son's name? I think Nate. I think that's Nick. Nick. And so you and Nicole aren't besties per se. You and Nicole. Oh no, like we're I mean we're friends, but yeah, the, my wife and her are, are okay. really good friends. Okay. And so Nick, you don't spend much time with Nick. No. Okay. Why is Nick there? That he was just with her with his mom. Okay. Is there anything weird about Nicole and Nick? Not that I really think of. Do you think anything about your wife not being around has had anything to do with the colonic? I would hope not. <laughs> I mean, like, Nicole is one of her good friends. Okay. I don't think they could have done, like, I don't think they could have done anything, like, as far as, like, helping her get out and then being so emotional when they couldn't find her. I don't think like they I don't think they could be capable of that. Yeah. So then they're they're at home. Um, police officers there. Mm -hmm. Um, then walk me through that. So as we go through the house, we're all. Do you immediately go through the house? Oh, like I open the garage door and I just I just go into the house. And I'm 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 looking like I just go in the garage door and I'm looking. Is the police officer saying, "Hey, let me talk to you for a minute"? No, no, okay. What's, no. The, what's the vibe like? I just, I just I go up there, shake his hand, but I'm like opening the garage door at the same time. Okay. And then I go through, and then they're waiting at the front door. I go in, open that up, and then they come in. Oh, so they didn't go in the garage door with you? Okay. Well, they they went in the garage waiting. Come in the way I did. All right. So then they, everybody goes in, okay, and then what? I run upstairs and I look in the bedrooms. Okay. And because that's where she would be. Mm -hmm. That's where I I would expect. So it's just a standard house, upstairs bedrooms, downstairs living area. Yep. Okay. And there's one office downstairs. Okay. And then and so then upstairs then what? I'm going to Bella's room, going to Celeste's room, playroom, master bedroom. I'm looking everywhere like bathrooms. And nothing. Okay. And then so I found the night found the wedding ring right there on the nightstand and then Right then? Yeah. Okay. Is they, that weird? She only takes it off and she covers her hair. Okay. And actually she'd already covered her hair like the week before, so okay. I don't that was just like probably a result of our conversation. Oh. I would think. Okay. And then Nick finds her phone on the couch. And why did he find her phone? Okay, so what's he looking for there? Ah, I don't know. He was he was looking for her. Like, clues. I clues. Just look, okay. I was looking around too, and it just happened just like to run across it right there on the couch. And make okay. The so he found it. It's not as though you were calling it to find it. He just found it. Yeah. Okay. Then what? Saw the um, Nikki gets the puts the passcode in because it was a four digit passcode before and it was a six digit this one this time. So and now like oh one thirty one nineteen. 19. Yeah. She knew her friend's passcode? Yeah, I didn't. Because it used to be 285, but when she changed it to six. Why did Nikki know it? Maybe she knew it over the weekend because I'd never seen a six digit passcode on her, on her phone. Is that normal to you that Nicole might share her passcode with somebody? I wouldn't think so. As, do you know her to have done that before? No, because only she's only told me her passcode before. Like her, I mean, her phones are lifeline. So, okay. Are she close with Nicole? I mean, 
percentage? I mean, decently close. How long have they known each other? Probably well, at least over a year. How did they meet? Uh, when her mom, when Shanann's mom lived here, they, uh, her, Shanann's mom worked at a, she was a hairdresser, and Nikki was like one of the managers. Oh, Nicole, sorry. Oh, okay. And then did she, did she then get her hair done there or something by Nikki? No. Okay. I was just Shanann's mom and Nicole were friends, and then Shanann got Nicole into the drive, and oh, okay. went from there. All right. So now we're at finding the phone. Nicole I'm watching the phone then what? Waiting for the everything to load up and watching all the text messages pop up, phone calls pop missed calls pop up and go from there. And what were they? It was just people call asking asking like, are you okay? Where are you? type things. Okay. Alright. Um Okay, then what? The police officer, he looks at the phone, just kind of, he just kind of look, looks through it just to see like if anything looks, you know, on up any of the text messages. Mm -hmm. And then um, I walk downstairs and I'm looking around down there, seeing if I see anything at all. Okay. I, don't, I mean, nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. And then um, I think of that was at four o'clock. That's when um, cause the neighbor, cause the neighbor, yeah, I was the officer, I went over to the neighbor's house to see if he saw anything. And who's that neighbor's hat? I think it was the officer. Uh -huh. He just went over there. Um, and then that's when the uh, neighbor called him back over to show him he, um, he had some stuff from the other night. Okay. Kind of show him like whatever he had that I like, put motion on it. Okay. Who originally called the police? Uh, Nicole. Okay. And is that the time when you're telling me you're coming home and she's freaking out? She said that. She told me she was going to call the police, but I thought, okay, I'm coming home. It's like, let me let, let me look through everything. Let's see what's going on here. And I, on my way home, I, that's when she called me and said, the cops are here. Okay. All right. Okay. Greater um, police officer and detectives are asking Kwanai questions about where she could have gone, where she could go. 4 p.m. Police check neighbor security footage and question them as well. Okay. Have we talked about that? Is that where we're, we're, mm -hmm. okay. where we're at? Uh, anything else about that? No, I mean, it just shows Nicole dropping her off, but her not walking up, and it shows me loading my truck up okay. about the time that told you I left. Okay. Officer, detective, and sergeant come by to search the house and ask some more questions. How'd that go? They just uh, had me sign the paperwork to search the house. Okay. And I just waited outside and let them okay. go through the house. Yeah. There's a missing person's warrant, I guess. Sure. Okay. And did they get find any other clues? Okay. Um, begin calling around to anyone I know that could know something or maybe see Shannon. Calling locals, hospitals, and hospitals as well. 7.30 p.m. Friends, Nick and Amanda come by to show support. Okay. So 6 p.m. Begin calling around to anyone I know that could know something or maybe see Shannon. What happened there? Same thing, like everybody that I've talked to, it's like they haven't heard from her, they haven't seen her, they nothing. Call the hop, what's up? Who's helping you make these calls? That's just me, just at this point. That's you by yourself? I was by myself. I'm sure Nicole and other people were doing that while they were gone. Okay. Because they were gone at this point. Where did Nicole go? Back to her house. Back to her house. She was there when they came back to search the house. Nicole was? She was parked outside. When is this? Five o'clock? Yeah, she was parked outside. Did she come in and help them? No. Why not? Well, because they told me to wait outside. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Is there any weapons in the house? No. Okay. Um, if we wanted to bring a lot more people with a lot more tools and tricks to your house, um, could we do that tonight? It's up to you. Okay. Um, I was going to stay at a friend's house. I was on my way over there. Okay. Tonight, but that's up to you. You're going to stay at a friend's house? I was. Okay. If we were to get into your house without you there, how would we do it? Punch the passcode in the front, 2385. Okay, and that's the garage passcode? No, that's the front door. And it, I thought you were going to latch or something preventing you from getting in. I know, but if you don't latch it, it's... I just don't latch it now? Yeah. Okay. Um, we might think about that. I think it's our idea. All right. What do you think? I was just going to go to her friend's house because I couldn't stay there. I couldn't stay there last night. I couldn't sleep there. Who put friend's house? Uh, Nick and Amanda. Oh, is that her friend's or your friend's? They're both of our friends. Okay. I run with Nick. Okay. 
And when you say hers, is that your wife or is that Nicole's? My wife's. Your wife's. Yeah. She's Nancy's friends, yeah. Okay. They could have been there. Um, if they're waiting outside right now, actually. Are they? <laughs> Were they the ones that's on TV? More than likely. Okay. Uh, um, one bald guy? Young, young kid with the brim bald cap? Yeah. Colorado or something? Yeah. Maybe? That was Nick. That was Nick? Okay. I thought Nick was. No, wait, Nicole was something Nicole son. Nick? So there's two Nicks now? Yeah. Okay, so Nicole's son is Nick. Yeah. And your friend's Amanda. Amanda oh. and Nick. Yeah. Are they married? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh gosh, I'll say like a Nick and Amanda Thayer. That oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I know the Thayer name. They showed up at the house or somewhere, right? Yep. Okay. All right. Good friends. Mm-hmm. I know a reason to worry about them. No. How do you and the, how do you and Shannon know them? The Amanda through Thrive, or actually Amanda was at Primrose at the at where the kids went to school. Okay. She used to be director there. Oh. And once she left as once she didn't once she left as a director position, when she left to go to a different school, that's when Shannon got her on Thrive and became friends and okay. me and Nick started running and okay. Okay. that's all right. Um friend of the no commercial sport. Friend to Lauren Arnold? Yep. Who's that? Uh Shannon's high school friend. Okay. Was that her? And how'd she find out about all this? Uh, Facebook. And so did you ask them who and where Shanann might be? Oh yeah, like Shanann, uh, Lauren and Shanann were actually supposed to meet up that day. To do what? To meet up at the house with this pregnancy pal thing. At your house? Mm-hmm. What time? I don't know. Was there any communication about that? Not to me. How do you know? I, that was the first I heard of it because she said that she was supposed to they were supposed to meet up that day. Oh, when she came over at eight. Yeah. She said, "Holy cow, we were gonna meet together, something like that." Yeah, like that. When she heard about everything on Facebook about Shannon being missing. She's like, "Yeah, her and I, uh, her and I were supposed to." Lauren said, "Her and I were supposed to meet up and do a little pregnancy pal thing." Is Lauren pregnant? Yes. Okay. First kid. Third. Okay. And so, oh, both third kids. So they were just gonna meet up because they're expecting the mothers. Yeah, they're probably just gonna just hang out yeah. and find yeah. see each other in a while. Okay. I ain't worried about her though. Okay. Who are you worried about? Anybody that I know right now, like if they have not told me anything, it's it it it's driving me nuts. It's driving me nuts because like there's no way like the people that I know that have kids that could have helped her if if, if she's at somebody's house right now, like. They would have had to say something but with all this going on there's no way they could have kept their mouth shut by now so then who are you worried about honestly like i can't really say like if i'm worried about anybody right now as far as like any of her friends that i know okay. all of them are showing like they, they're deep concern about what's going on right now okay. and i think like with that deep concern that that can't be faked okay so then who are you worried about? It has to be somebody I don't know, honestly. Okay. The only thing that I can think of is something somebody I don't know. Okay. Does your gut tell you that Shannon and the kids walked out or that they were taken out? Yesterday I would have said they walked out. Today I would have said I'm only in the other direction. Okay. Friends, Dave Cologne. Cologne and Jeremy Lindstrom combined to show support. Who are they? Dave Cologne, he when I worked for Ford, he ran an auto body shop. He actually works for Boulder County Sheriff's Department now. Oh, okay. And Jeremy Lindstrom, I worked he was he worked in the sales department at Ford when I was a tech. Mm-hmm. And he works on the Ford dealership now. Okay. Um, and Jeremy's Jeremy's the daughter just watched the kids over that this past weekend too. So we know them pretty well. Oh, um, which is that was me. McKenna? Okay. Was she the one watching the kids the night before? Mm-hmm. Okay. I saw her name in her report or something. Um, how did that go with Dave and Jeremy? Oh, good. They're just, you know, just there just to show support, just, you know, chilling in the kitchen. Just two of them? And then that's me. Yeah, me and them. And Lauren and all of them had gone by then? Oh, yeah. Everybody else had gone by then. Okay. Um, when they come over to show support, um, what are you guys talking about? Just talking just about like what could have happened. Like, do you think do you think she could have gone somewhere? Do you think she was actually taken? Like, what like just random questions like that. Just and then they're just talking about just other stuff to get my to kind of get things off my head a little bit. Okay. Okay. 
Um, 10 o'clock, I lay in bed and proceed to take calls from friends and family the rest of the night. How'd that go? Just answering, uh, nobody can sleep as far as East Coast, anything like, you know, Addy, Sam. Who's Addy and Sam again? Addy milk up their leaders and thrive. Okay. They're people that Shannon talk, reaches up to. Okay. Have we talked to them? Oh, yeah. We talked to them on the phone. You have. I've talked, I, I've texted them, but okay. it's all on there. Okay. And so the real live communication sense, we couldn't find Shannon. Yeah, like them. Okay. Have police talked to them? I believe so. Okay. Just on the phone? Yes. Are they in North Carolina? No, they're like northeast. Northeast what? Like uh, Baltimore. Oh, yeah, okay. over All right. there. Alright. Who else calls? See, her mom, talk to my parents, talk to my sister, talk to a Texas with Kelly, that's another, she lives in New Jersey. Oh, who else? Jeremy, Dave. All those people. Okay. All right. Um, can we talk about something kind of hard to talk about? Um, so when I work investigations like this, I have to keep an open mind on everything. Okay. And part of keeping an open mind is listening to you talk about your wife and your marriage, and. The day she goes missing is the day that you guys have marital discord. Okay. So you can understand uh, what I'm thinking about you. Yeah. What do you think about that? Uh, it makes me sick to my stomach, honestly. Like, I know, like, I've talked to a few of my friends, like, you know, this does not look good on you. But I'm like, I know. It's like, people that, if people knew that we were having marital issues, they're going to look at me. Especially with the way everything looks. And honestly, it just makes me sick to my stomach because this is something that I would never do. Ever. I, I know, like, you have to look at every every vantage point. This is something I would never do to my kids or my wife. At all. I'm not sure, like, what I could do to like to make people believe that just because if they if they knew were having marital discord they would all not automatically believe me. But there's no I would harm anybody in my family. At all. I know we were having marital discord and we had that conversation that morning and then she goes mm. We have no idea where she is, or the kids. I promise you that is not, I have not, I have nothing to do with any of that. Are you telling me the truth? I'm sorry. Why should I believe you? Because I'm a very trustworthy person. And the people that do know me, they know how I am a calm person. I am not an argumentative person. I am a person who is never going to be abusive or physical in any kind of relationship. I will never harm my kids. I will never harm my wife. I mean, you can talk. I mean, any, you can talk to any of my friends, any of her friends. They know me. They know I'm a low key guy. That's quiet. I'm. I'm not about confrontation. I'm not about anything that elevates to that level. I mean, you can, like if someone like yells at me, screams at me, I just take it and I just try to get it by the wayside and get it back to where it's a cool, like, just a cool conversation to where like none of that, none of that gets to that height. Because I am not that person. I've never been that person. Okay. Um, you can imagine it's my job. Okay. And I told you that tonight, you know, we were talking about things and might offend you, might 
Um, you know that we have to get to the bottom of this. So you know that. Yeah. Okay. Would you take a polygraph? Sure. Okay. Would you take it tonight? If that, that's what you want me to do. Yeah. I've never done one. I don't know like what it involves, but you know what it is. Uh, from what I've seen, it goes on your finger. You know what the purpose of one is? That's for a lie detector test. Okay. Um, all right. Well, why don't we do this? Let's take a little break. I'm going to come back in here because I have a lot more questions for you. Okay. Um, I want to remind you that tonight is voluntary. Okay. I can't keep you in here. I won't keep you in here. If you want to get fired up and walk out of here, you can do that. Okay. All right. Do you want to keep talking with me? I mean, I can. I mean, if that's what you want, I can keep talking. Okay. And you understand that I'm not arresting you right now. And you understand that you can walk out of here anytime. Sure. Okay. Having said that, I do want to talk to you. Uh, I have a lot more questions for you. Okay. Okay. Do you know where your wife is? No. Telling the truth. I'm telling you the absolute truth. Okay. Let's take a tiny break. Um, get some more energy use with them. Uh, no. Okay. Get some water or Gatorade yeah. actually if you need it. Um, I'm going to step out for a minute. I need to look over some of my notes. Uh, and then come right back in here. I'm not going to be out very long. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll be right back. have everyone else. Um, I'm just going to keep the turn for a little bit longer. So just shuffle people through the other ones. Right. How are you feeling? Look at that picture. Those shoes, even though they were winter shoes. They were what? Winter shoes. <laughs> Those are her boots, aren't they? So now I'm just gonna sell them off to uh, like that Facebook marketplace and share them on the, on the windowsill there. And when we got back to North Carolina, I guess if you saw them sitting over there, and she proceeded to take them back and wear them. Every day since they got back. <laughs> no matter if it was 100 degrees outside or what, she loved those shoes. She always loved those shoes. And Bella, she always wore some flip flops. She always will. She just like, she loved that dress. She loved those flip flops. She, she loved that dress. She likes the buttons on the back. Is she, she short for something? She loves Bella and Celeste. Mm -hmm. Tell me about them. Yeah. Celeste, she's Rampage. She's always the one that's, she's got a hoe. She's always the one that's just like, she's off. She's either go or she's asleep. She's always the one growling. She's, she's always been, she's a tiger. Bella, she's the calm, the mothering one. She's the one that's always, you okay? You okay? Fine? Okay. She's just, she's just the sweetest little girl. She's the one that favors me more, and Celeste is the one that favors the man more. That's the way I look at it. You see some baby pictures of me, and Bella is just like, oh, the other way around. Correct. So when I say favor, do you look like? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't look daddy's girl. That was. Yeah, that's how it works, isn't it? 
because the first one I wasn't really good at it yet. Second one I knew what I was doing and she bought it with me right from the start. Yeah. I remember when they wore that dress. She just wore that dress not too long ago. Trying to button the back of it so I could get her pajama on. She's like, no, yeah, you're fine. I got buttons. I got buttons. I'm done a lot of those spaghetti strap dresses. She likes long dresses. She was the girly girl. Always. She used to just like, she loved I always like tried to put her in a Supergirl t shirt and she loved it every time. She used to always be smiling though. Bella, you have to like really kind of, like, you want some gum? <laughs> she said, you said you want some gum. She was in looking in this picture. I think she's always just smiling on the camera. I gotta find them, right? I need your help. I gotta find them. I gotta find your man. This is the picture somebody sent me. Where it was the side by side of. Balance slash and snam. There was a post to like one of these companies. Okay. This was the picture they use of the girls. Alright. Where you can get them out of anything like that now? There's so much I want to see these, these two girls and my wife again. So I want them to come home. that um, when when children go missing in the FBI, it's, it's a lot like you see in the movies. Mm -hmm. We like to get every single one of our recent resources. We like to call every agent and wake them up out of bed, call them back from vacation. We just really like to put the full force in. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you're comfortable supporting? Yeah. Okay. That means that I want to have as many eyes, as many hands, as many investigators, as many evidence people as we can possibly get looking at your house. Okay. Can we do that right this minute? Want to. I'll cop it out of the way if you want. Okay. Um, that's usually best. For you, for us, yeah. for everyone. Okay. Can you show me to stay at my friend's house then? Um, is that an option? Yeah, because okay. I'm not sure if it's still outside. I'm not sure if it's right. on that phone. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to ask you about your phone. Yeah, I'll have my stick. I'd stick it on here anyway. Okay. But, um, the concrete block. So, what I might do then is in, I don't know, five, ten minutes, I might just step out for a very quick break and just say, guys, let's go in that house right now. Um, 2385. You did tell me that, and I did write it. The garage is 2385? The front door. The front door, 2385, and that latch or whatever is not going to get in our way? It, okay. it should be unlatched. Okay, good. All right. If um, it is, just call me. Now, when you go in there, I want them to run a black light over everything. I want them to have to collect DNA. I want them to look for hair strands and DNA samples. And I want them to look at your stuff and your wife's stuff and your children's stuff and the garage stuff and the car stuff. All of it. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any problems with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so then I want them to do that sooner than later. I might step out here in a minute and just tell them the code. And just let them know, guys, let's find how we can get these girls. Okay. Um, can we keep talking about some complicated things? Sure. Some things that are going to make you uncomfortable? No, that's fine. Right. Okay. Um, and I think you know why I have to ask them. Okay. Yeah. And it's a hard job. It's a hard job. It is a hard job. And. I'm going to ask you one thing and you're going to give me an answer and I'm going to ask it just a slight bit, bit different and you're going to give me an answer and then about 10 iterations of this you might get annoyed but 
I do that to make sure that we understand each other. Okay, is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have your daughter's one mission. We have your wife's who's mission. Okay. And that's the most important thing right now. Okay. Um, do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So you've done very good in talking to me about this really hard conversation you guys had. Okay. Very good. That's sometimes hard. And I understand why sometimes someone in your position says, uh, doesn't want to tell me about that. Because please go help me find my kids and you don't need to know about my, my marriage argument. Okay. So I got to say, you've done very good at that. Um, and I need you to keep doing that. So I need to ask you about um, your marriage and uh, infidelity. So, okay, tell me about it. Now, I have never cheated on my wife. Okay. And I fully suspect she has never done that to me. Oh, okay. Like, she's always been a trustworthy person. I've always been a trustworthy person. I fully expect if we ever thought about straying another way, mm -hmm. that we would tell each other before it happened. I think that sounds ridiculous. Okay. Because in the history of the earth, nobody ever does that. Okay. I just, <laughs> I just, I just, that's what I would like to think. Okay. I mean, I mean, I know mistakes happen. Like, sure. You know. Yeah. But that's what I, would, in my head, that's what I would okay. think would happen. I would hope would happen. Okay. But now, even though I think that sounds ridiculous, yeah. if I was in your shoes, I'd say the exact same thing. And, and I believe that. Okay. okay. But I kind of don't. And you can imagine in my job, I meet all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine that there are people who have Saturdays with their girlfriend and Sundays with their wives. Okay. Right? And they consider themselves to be very virtuous people. Okay. So, with that in mind, I don't care if there's been anything in your relationship. I just don't. So, and I'm not going to tell the news and I'm not going to tell anyone. But I do need to know. So, so is there anyone that you think that maybe your wife got close with? If she did, it was very like secret then if that was the case because okay. I I had no inkling. No at all. No. Okay. It, no. It wasn't even a sus suspicion. Okay. Not one guy. Or girl. No. If, if, if that was the case, I mean, I didn't have one suspicion about it. Like, if, if, if it happened, it wasn't even like, I wasn't aware. Nothing there was no clue. Sure. There was no, like, okay. you know, texting with the phone, like, back or like you know i walk in swipe type yeah. thing I, I didn't really have any of that okay no perfume when she's going out with the girls she always smells she always sprays something you know what I mean. yeah i know that it wasn't perfume. it wasn't like you know like that one in a million perfume or something okay. like that you know All right. no late nights that surprised you so, okay now let's talk about you okay, okay. um on your end I gotta ask, what's your what's your name? <laughs> I don't have another one. You sure? I'm sure. Okay. Would you tell me if you did? Yes. Okay. Um so again, highly trained investigator over here, right? I see pictures of you from a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And I see you standing before me now. Okay. 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 You've gotten pretty fit. Yeah. Okay. You can imagine when guys start cheating or want to cheat, that's what happens. Yes. Tell me about it. That I did not cheat on my wife. Okay. Not thrive, help me. I went from 245 pounds to about 245. Oh, 245 Jeez. pounds. And I'm great, man. Thank you. And I'm 185, 180 right now. Mm -hmm. And I've been eating cleaner, just trying to the last the last little bit. Thrive has helped me a lot, but to maintain it and try to eat cleaner has really helped me as well. Okay. And I've got to imagine that maybe there was a girl that inspired her. No. No? No. Okay. Why are you falling out of love? Over the last five the last five weeks, like being by myself and being able to be myself again. I couldn't be myself for lunch anymore. Why not? It was like I was walking just like if like you know, like walk on eggshells type thing. It's kinda like you don't you feel like you're always doing something that's wrong. It's like you, you feel like you're never like doesn't make does that make sense at all? The timing doesn't make sense to me. Okay. But like it's like like if you can't be yourself around your wife, who can you be yourself around? Why couldn't you be yourself anymore? 
I just felt like I'd always have to change who I was because I, I was always about, I mean, I was doing the laundry, I do, I do everything. Mm -hmm. Like I do everything that I could for her, everything. Mm -hmm. And then like the last five weeks I just like, I was just, you know, just being myself, just doing me. And I just thought to myself like, one of my buddies, Mark, he lives out in San Diego. It was like one big test that he learned. Like he, he was divorced at one point. And he was like, so if you could picture yourself, like if you could picture your wife and she was with someone else, would you get jealous? I was like, at this point, I have to say no. And he was like, well, there's your answer. Like if you love her, it would be a different answer. When did you start pulling out? It, ha it, it wasn't in the last five weeks. It's been an ongoing process for probably about a year. Why? I just felt like everything that we had when we first started dating and met, like we met in 2010, everything, you know, your new relationship, spark, everything hot, have everything's great. Get married, everything's still great. And then like, you know, people just fall out of love. And that's, that's where I was. Like, I just felt like over the last year, I thought that like okay maybe maybe this is just like a phase maybe this, you know like just you know this is what happened like you've been with somebody so long maybe like you know the spark in the there just reunited somehow some way but you know our conversations weren't the same like when we were apart like everything was just like you know short and it was just like it, nothing felt right anymore the disconnection was there and it just never felt right anymore but why it wasn't better like I just didn't feel it like it was like I didn't have that passion anymore. Why not? I, I, I really couldn't, I can't tell you like it's the passion. I, I didn't feel it in my heart anymore. Like, I really, I really can't like just give you a definitive answer other than that. It's like my heart wasn't in it. I gotta tell you that sounds like a lot of horseshit. Uh, man. Um, I know. What about the girls? Bella and Celeste have lied in my life. I'd do anything for those girls. I'd step in front of a bullet so for the train for those girls. It doesn't add up to me, then why did this part back? The rest of the relationship between me and Shanann has nothing to do with the love I have for these girls. I mean, the love for these girls, these, I mean, they're the light of my life. I would do anything for them. Mm -hmm. But me and Shannon talked about like if we separated or if we stay together, like what's best for the kids? Like, do we stay together for the kids? That you look it up, it doesn't work that way. Like it might cause more issues for the kids later on down the road with their psyche or personality or something. They know when they can they get older, they see like oh, mom and dad don't sleep in the same room anymore. Like what's going on? I think. Okay. If you had to guess, if you had to put your finger on it, if you had to, you know, one or two people that are hot and heavy that have kids that they love, what happened? I mean, you can't take the kids into the fact into the factor because, like, when the love for you have for your kids is going to be like exponential. I mean, it, it'll no matter what, that will never die. Mm -hmm. those are your kids mm -hmm. that'll never die between you and your wife like the love that you have for each other like from start to finish like from right when you started to where you're in your, if your relationship ends like some like when you're in that type of relationship you're with somebody for that long like, something happens like something like if it's just conversations or if it's just like you know I mean, it's not attractiveness at all. Like, it's just a connection that isn't there. Like, you know, when you can like look at someone and or just like put your forehead to their forehead and you just like hold them and you know what each other's thinking. That's a connection. I didn't have that connection anymore. Okay. What do I do? To help you walk out of this room and not look like the person who's responsible. You have to trust me that when I tell you that these two beautiful girls right here, I did nothing to them and to my beautiful wife, I did nothing to her. 
like you have to trust me and believe me like I know you don't know me as a person you, you've known me for like two and a half three hours mm-hmm. and I don't know what your opinion is but you have to realize that these two beautiful girls right here and my wife I had nothing to do with the disappearance like they vanished they were taken someone take, has taken them they're safe somewhere we don't know I had nothing to do with these with this, with this act of like evil cruelty whatever has happened here because my love for these two girls and my wife like I don't want anything to happen to them I've never wanted anything to happen to them no matter if I'm me and my wife separate or not or divorce or anything I never wish harm on anybody on a human being in general okay. like just seeing that picture like I need them I, I want them just to run through that front door and just grab me mm-hmm. or just barrel just tackle me knock me to the floor bust my head up, I don't care the amount of love I have for my family is exponential and I, it's never going to die and they need I want them back okay. I have to have them back about a normal day in your house. Felt like one when I'm actually home all day. You know, let's pick a day. Okay, two months, two months ago. Let's, yeah. pick a let's pick a school day. A school day. Okay. So, well, I'm usually at work. Okay. But so usually so I'm their lives and your lives. Okay. So school or school day. So I'll get up about four o'clock. I'll go down, work out for maybe about an hour or so. At your house? Yeah, it's a weight really bench in the basement. Okay. So get done with that, come back upstairs by about five o'clock. I'll eat some breakfast, make some eggs, cottage cheese, something like that. Everybody's still sleeping. I'll make the girls milk, I'll make Cece's milk. I'll bring it upstairs. Bella's usually kind of iffy on milk in the morning. So I can okay. fill up the water bottles, mm-hmm. put it in the refrigerator, make sure the backpacks have changed clothes, their hat. And if it's like a swim, like a water day or something, make sure they have water shoes in there, make sure they have sunscreen, make sure all that in their backpacks. Change clothes for what? In case they have an accident. Like, oh, okay. Little, yeah. yeah. Okay. And not much Bella, but it's a lot. Sure. Um, and make sure they have their little blankies if they, whenever they go nap. Okay. They have all that with them. I have that all laid out and then I go to work. Mm-hmm. So when Jeanette, well, the kids dictate when Jeanette wakes up and usually, usually it's Bella. She'll come in there, lay in the bed with her. And then Celeste, She'll wake up, they'll just come in and lay in the bed with her, and they'll watch cartoons for for a little while at least. Mm-hmm. And by about 6 30, they'll get out, they'll channel, well, she'll probably be in the bathroom at this point in time while they're watching because she, Celeste has her milk at that point in time and she's just chilling in the bed. Okay. Shanann's getting ready, she'll probably take a shower, put makeup on, all that kind of stuff, and then takes the kids over into their rooms, get some dressed, out of pajamas, and their Bella has a school uniform. She didn't have one yet, so um, get them dressed, um, go downstairs, have breakfast. You see, you'll probably have cereal, Bella, probably uh, some like cinnamon toast. Mm-hmm. Um, have that. They may have, might have a little snack on the way to school, maybe some dry cereal or something. Mm-hmm. Just put it in the cars and go to school. Mm-hmm. And then they'll stay at school. Usually it's about four o'clock, four thirty. I'll usually be home by then. I can go pick them up. I go in there, sign them out, get them in the car, drive back. They'll be screaming the whole way because they want mommy. Mm-hmm. And that's what they do after a long day of school. Mm-hmm. And get home. Shannon will have something for the girls, being whatever they want. Either it might be pizza. Sometimes they want French fries. Sometimes they want chicken nuggets. Sometimes kibbutz. Just like mm-hmm. just whatever. Most of them, they have butter noodles. They love that. Okay. So send them at the, wash their hands, send them at the table, and they'll eat their dinner. Get them all washed up, get the dry lock some lotion, get the pajamas on, back downstairs, have a little nighttime snack, they'll pick it, you know, cheese it, a little okay. wafer or something mm-hmm. like that. And they'll sit on their little couches and they'll watch a cartoon until about seven o'clock and then between six thirty and seven we're giving them the medicine and any medicine they need at that point in time, if one of them has a fever or okay. whatever else. And then Brush your teeth, 
upstairs, CC gets my overnight diaper, Bella doesn't. And read my book. She usually wants a uh, tiger, the tiger book, mm -hmm. and I read that to her. We growl at the last part. Mm -hmm. Turn the rain machines on. Put is, the is that what you said? She's a tiger. Yes. Does that come by? Yes. Okay. And turn the rain machines on. Give both kiss good night. She wants me to put her to bed. Bella wants she to put her to bed. And close the door. And night night. Okay. All right. we talk a little bit about um, the morning that they disappeared? Mm -hmm. um, we already talked about 4 o'clock alarm, prep until 4.15, correct me if I'm wrong, 4.15 the challenging yes. talk starts, you leave somewhere around 5.30, 20 something, 5.27, yeah. um, and then what, what was your day like? So I went out to locations. What was that? I thought oil locations. Oh, uh, locations. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I worked out on those old locations until it was twelve ten. That's when I got the doorbell visitor notification. What do you do out there? What do you do at work? I'll either operate the uh, oil and gas locations we have running. Oh, okay. Yeah, like either maintenance or just like inspections or like trying to get them running again type of thing. And are you the guy with the wrench or are you the boss? I'm I'm one of the field coordinators. Okay. So like our uh, the area we have is like really like it's really big. So like I have. Me and two other guys are field coordinators. Then we have two rovers, which they like go around to the, the area and they help other operators. Then we have six route operators. Okay. So the field coordinators, we kind of, kind of get everybody like, all right, this is what we're going to do today, type okay. thing, and disperse, okay. type thing. So then when you left at 5:30, which location did you go to? So the survey 319, which is the generally well location. Is it a well location? Yeah, we have the Servi 1029. Servi? Yeah, it's just well names. Servi? Yeah. Like S E R V Y? Yeah. Okay. And then there was the 1129, and we say the 1029 most of the day. And so these are numbers I don't even understand. I know, there's, there's like section number, well number type. Oh, okay. that's, that's how they name them. Okay. So then it might be that, God forbid, two weeks from now, we're still looking for them. And it's going to be very important that. All of this can jar your memory, right? Yeah. So I'm taking notes to serve you what? So we have the 1129. Where do you go first? The 319. 319. Where and what crossroads would that be? Oh, it, it's out in the ranch. Oh, okay. It, yeah. Serve 319. Okay. Yeah. How long are we at Serve 319? Probably about an hour. Okay. Just telling the boys what to do? I was out there checking a uh, line that we had leaking it for on Friday. Okay. Okay, and that took about an hour? Yep. Then what? Went to the 1129. Okay. Again, is that just in the middle of a ranch? Yeah, it's the same ranch. Okay. Oh, so how far away? Not far. Walking distance? No. Oh, walking distance. <laughs> <That's laughs> ranch. Yeah, you don't drive there. Okay. How long were you at 1129? Probably about 20 minutes or so. Doing what? I was just checking, just doing an inspection over there. See if I can get the welder run again. Okay. This one you have to kind of run, man run manually. Okay. And then where? The 1029. We were there most of the rest of the day. Doing what? Replace. We're trying to get a pumping unit to pump back up, and stuffing box rubbers uh, were leaking, and the rods were smoking, so we had to replace them. That's what took a very long time. And how long we got there? Uh, the rest until twelve ten. So six seven hours. Oh well, yeah, five hours. Yeah. Okay. At least like five hours. It seemed like five. And how many people with you? Oh yeah, there were people with me. Like mm -hmm. there's, I gave them the names. Okay. There was a police now. Yeah, Troy McCoy, Chad McNeil, Melissa Parrish, Cody Roberts. They're all out there with me. Okay. And you said you called home at 7.30 or so? I texted 7.40. Okay. And that was something like, a, where are you? Yeah, I couldn't go back that far on my phone to see when I called, but I did call her two or three times during that. And why then was that a better part of the day for you to text? Yeah, because like I was, at that point in time, like I was actually trying to call my foreman and everything else, like just to, like, just to talk to him, to tell him what I found. And it kept just like, it wouldn't ring out there. What you found, what do you mean? No, no. The line that we're leaving. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, like we had a bypass line, mm -hmm. back pressure line that was tied into a down, you know, down come on to an oil tank and it was leaking on the ground. Okay. But like I was not getting any phone calls through, so that's why I was texting. Okay.
said that makes you not believe me at all. This just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't matter. Though. So can we talk about two Chris's? Okay. Two Chris's. The tale of two Chris's? Okay. Um, and you need to help me know which Chris I'm looking at today and which Chris you really are. So Chris number one is right here. Right? And fell out of love with his wife. Okay. Started wondering what it might be. He didn't have a wife to take care of and a girl to take care of. Spent some time alone. Liked that time alone. Came home. May or may not have had a conversation about how to get out of this marriage, or how to fix it, but probably how to get out of it. Was looking at a bachelor pad in Brighton, and did something terrible to his wife and kids. And that may have been an accident, and I think it was an accident. That's not the Chris we're looking at right now. Well, like Chris, you're looking at is the man who loves these kids and loves his wife and will never, ever, ever do anything to help harm them. That's the Chris you're looking at right now. The Chris you're looking at right now wants these kids and his wife back at his house right now. That's the Chris you're looking at. Why didn't you call my mom? I didn't think anything was wrong. I think you knew what was wrong. I did not know what was wrong, sir. I promise you that. What do you think it's going to look like when someone finds out that it was not you that called my mom? Everybody's going to have their own perception about what's going on here, but I know my wife. I know that sometimes she doesn't text me back. I know that happens. I've, I've, I've been done. It's happened multiple times throughout 
many days. If she's busy with work, it doesn't happen. That's why it didn't register for me that day. We're back to his tale of two Christmas cares. Okay. Is it Chris who cares? Um, I care. I promise. Tell me about the call to your daycare. To the primrose? I called them to see if the girls were there. They said they weren't there. Okay. I told them since they weren't there, just put them back on the waiting list. That's not what you told them. I told them that we were going to sell the house or put on the market or probably wouldn't be in the area anymore. That's two different things, Chris. Well, I wanted them to be back on, on I put them on the, on the waiting list since they weren't there. Why weren't they there? I don't know. Where were they going to go? They went to her, Snan took them to her friend's house. Why wasn't wouldn't they go to daycare? I am not sure. Uh, honestly, sir, I am not sure. It's hard for me as a father to talk to you about this. I know. Not because it's the hardest you talk about. It's because I'm worried about your daughters under your care. You shouldn't have to worry about them under my care. I watched them all weekend. I went to went to a pool party. Went to a pool party at Jeremy Lindstrom's house. Like, I love those kids with all my heart. Nothing in this world would ever make me do anything to these kids or my wife. When you walk out of this room, there's nothing I can say to a room full of police officers that's going to convince them that you have nothing to do with this. Uh, you know what they think. I, I know what all they call it. Yeah. There's a guy who didn't call 911, who woke his wife, wife up at a ridiculous hour because she was so guilty about something that he had to get it off his chest and say, I don't love you anymore, I'm leaving. That didn't go well. Okay, so what happened? So she told me she wanted me to wake her up before I left. That's why I didn't just wake her up, like, just to tell her this. Like, I woke her up. That's what she wanted to do, and we talked. Like, usually at 4 a.m., I wake up, I go down and work out. This day, I wanted to talk to her about this. I love these girls. I love these girls so much. And this picture right here, Celeste and Bella, those are my life. I'm helped make those kids. There's nothing in my life that means more to me than these kids. Nothing. Kids, that's that's your life. That's your lifeline. That's everything. Like you make kids, they they come first before anything. Kids, spouse, family. That's what it's always been. Nothing you've told me tonight makes sense. Nothing you've told me tonight feels like the truth. Can we start over? Sure. I think that there's something that happened that got me a little bit out of control. There was no fight. There was nothing physical. It was a it was a conversation. There was there's no we didn't raise our voice. Nothing. I promise you that. So there was there was nothing physical with this conversation. What was the last thing? What was the last thing you saw about your daughters? Nothing I saw, like when I left. What did it look like? I saw them in the monitor as it was switching back and forth. What's the last thing you saw with your wife? She was laying back in bed as I was walking out the door, walking out the bedroom door. 
Find the guy who took him. What do you think we should do? Honestly, like they're gonna come home safe, correct? When you find the guy. When we find the guy, they're gonna come home. Life in prison would be the. That's what I would. That's what I would think with two kids that are involved. What if he hurt them? Did they stop? Did, did, I'm not sure if like that penalty is even used. Is it used in Colorado? I'm not even sure. What is the death penalty? Okay. Um, I mean, like, if these kids are not alive, like, there's no, there's nothing you could do to to cope with that, to make me cope with that, if those kids are not okay. your plan after you guys separated? Did I get an apartment? Yeah. You're fine? Oh, then we just go our separate ways. Like, I would probably get an apartment. She would we'd try to sell the house first, of course, mm -hmm. before we can do anything with that. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, like, try to get both get an apartment somewhat close. Okay. So that, like, it's a 50 50 thing, like, because I was going to go on an 8 and 6 schedule in September, okay. and then I would have six days off, and it would be perfect to, you know, I'll have kids for half and she'd have half and that would be, that would work. Smart. Um, tonight's been pretty intense, I can imagine. How are you feeling? <laughs> I've, I've slept like two hours last night, so I'm like running on empty right now, but I know. I can see it. So why don't I do this? I'm sure you don't mind if we take a break for the night. Um, I'm sure that you are um, feeling some of the pressure from me. Okay. You're doing your job. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't grill you a little bit, right? Okay. I've seen you tell two different guys. <laughs> Honestly, like I've seen like where you're smiling, and I've seen where it's it's different. Yeah. I, I can, yeah. Okay. I'm doing your job though. Like I can't fault you for anything you guys. So can I make a commitment to you? Yes. Okay. I'm going to commit to you that. When I'm going to stop working until we find them. Okay. Okay. And I want to commit to you that there is going to come a time when you're going to feel this pressure from other people. I'm not the only one who thinks that there's a possibility you have something to do with this. Like another FBI agent, like pressure, or like just like everyone. Okay. Everyone, please. Okay. And if you ever watched the news and said two girls and a pregnant woman go missing, okay, if that's all you heard, what do you think the public thinks? Positive. Okay. So, I'm going to make a commitment to you. Okay. I'm going to commit to you that I'm going to be your guy. Okay. I'm going to be your guy to handle the investigation. Okay. And I'm going to be your guy that you can come to. Okay. Because I hope that you realize I'm, I'm a nice guy. Um, tonight we had to talk about some tough things, but I hope that you know that I did it respectfully. I think you can see that. Um, and so, as we go on through tonight, the hours, the days, and I hope we don't get to hours or days, I hope it's minutes, right, until this is over. Yes. But just in case it's not, I want you to know that I wanted to be in this room tonight. I wanted to talk to you. Okay. Okay. And I hope that you want to talk to me. Okay. When you have questions, when you have concerns, I want you to call uh, the detective that you work with and I want you to call me. Okay. I want you to know that if you have a question, if you think we're not doing something enough or well enough, I want you to say, I gotta call Grant. I gotta call Dave. Okay. Okay. When you need to have a night to yell at somebody and maybe have a good cry, I want you to call me. Okay. Okay. I 
can't imagine what you're going through. I just can't. Like the last, today has been the whirlwind from, like, yesterday I thought she was just at somebody's house, and today with the drones, the police, and the news, I, I look like a scene out of a scene out of a movie. That's too much. It's too much for one person to handle. My dad's flying in tomorrow. Good. Okay. Check your dad. Who else you have? Uh, Nick and Amanda, Dave, Jeremy. Okay. Yeah, you only know me for three hours, but I want to be part of that team. Okay. Okay. I want to be part of the team that helps you, and I want you to be part of my team. Okay. Okay. Tonight, when you go home. One of two things gonna happen. You're gonna pass out because you're so tired. Okay. And that's probably not gonna be what happens. Your head's gonna go race. Okay. So tonight when you lay down and your head starts racing, there's gonna be things that come to your mind. Okay. This always happens. Always. It's very natural. You're gonna say, I wonder why he asked me that. Okay. You're gonna say, screw him. How dare he accuse me? Okay. You're gonna say, I wonder if they thought of this. Okay. And then you're gonna say. I probably should have told him something, or this or that, okay? Those are the most common things. Um, when those thoughts come to your head, I want you to call me. Go to you call Dave, okay? Um, it's fair for your mind to race, so I want you to call me, okay? You need a lifeline. You need someone you can call. I want to be that guy, all right? Um, and I want you to know that if I didn't accuse you a little bit, you'd probably wonder if I was good at my job. Well, uh, okay. one, of my, one of my buddies, he, he is straight with me. He was like, dude, I'll just be I'm no veil. Like, none of this looks good. So right. it's like, he's like, I'm not going to accuse anybody, but like, I'm not going to be like, he has his wife and their friends. It's like, they won't talk to you right now. Yeah. I'm like, oh, um, so. So we had this Chris, right? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the other Chris. He's just right here, okay? I can see that you're a good man, right? You don't have beautiful daughters with good clothing that look well fed, right? Children that are unhappy don't smile like this, okay? And those are beautiful kids. Those kids have a good dad, and I know it. Let's just see a picture of someone for him. Yeah. It's a better one. But it's just. I'm sorry, too. Those kids have a good dad. Good dad that feeds them and that loves them. I was very impressed when I asked you how their day was about how involved you are. Okay. Yeah, see you so much on the weekend. A lot of dads don't get second pairs of clothes and cook eggs and give them snacks at night, you know, a lot of, a lot of men, that's woman for it, right? I don't like to get involved. But you're not that kind of guy, okay? So, Chris, can you just look at me for one second? If there is something that happened, it's okay. It really is. Yeah. Okay. If something that happened with these girls, if there was an accident, if there's something you're afraid to tell me, it's okay. Yeah. If there's something that happened with your wife, it's okay. Okay. You can always tell me. And if you want to talk 15 minutes after you leave, I'll answer the phone. If you want to talk in the middle of the morning, I'll answer the phone. Okay. What I want to happen is, if that's what happened, if there was something that got out of hand, if there's something you know, I want you to go home and I want you to know that I'm the guy you can talk to, okay, who's not going to judge you. I have kids. Sometimes I, sometimes I joke with my wife, I just spent two weeks alone, you know? Like when you told me about your four to five weeks alone, I was like, wow, that sounds like a slice of heaven, right? Sometimes it's a bit much, okay? So let's do this. I mean, we're going to take a little break. Um, I'm going to help organize the search of your house tonight. Sure. Okay. I still want to do that. Okay. I was just going to go to my friend's house. So okay. Out of way. Okay. Now, hopefully they need no, to wait. I can't tell you that we have to do it. Okay. I don't, I, if you want, I, if 
like you said, you know, it rained tonight. Yeah. Like hard. Like it blew four trash cans in my yard. Let's get on it, right? Like it's whatever's there is there, and I want it found. I want to do that. I want to talk to you again tomorrow. Okay. okay. I want you to get a good night's sleep and a good breakfast and a good workout, whatever you got to do, whatever your morning routine is. My dad flies in in the morning about like eight or nine. Okay. So what time should we plan on doing that? Can I get him back home first and then come here? <laughs> of course. Okay. And listen, uh, of course, okay. your time get settled in. So what time do you fly? He should be here around eight or nine. You're nine? Yeah. Okay. Then he's flying to North Carolina. Here's what I would love to have happen. He's flying in eight or nine. You got to go get him. You got to get him back. Uh, he's going to want to know everything. Yeah. Okay. He's your oh, dad. Yeah. Okay. He's called me like 10 times today. It's going to take forever. And he's going to have questions and comments and concerns. Okay. Um, I would love for you and me as a team to, to talk tomorrow, to do a polygraph tomorrow, and move past all of it. Okay. Move past me wondering about Chris. Me about wondering which Chris I'm talking to. I want to move past it. I just want to get it behind us. Okay. And then our talks are going to be a lot more comfortable than they were tonight. So can we say that tomorrow at 11 o'clock? Sure. We can do a polygraph? Sure. Here. Okay. Uh, and there might be little tweaks. It might be at a different office or this. We're not going to okay. try to rock your world too much. We know what you're going through. Okay. I want to get that done. I want to just move past it. Okay. Okay. Could we do that? Yeah. 11 o'clock? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any questions for me? No, like, I have your, have your phone number. Yeah. So that, like, if this flight does get delayed, I can call you. Yeah, absolutely. You have days, right? Yes. So you base that up here? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. You know that's a 24 hour number, okay? Okay. Let's make that happen tomorrow. Okay. okay. One of the one of the things that makes us wonder about which Chris you can is when you don't answer the phone. Okay? So if I call you, I get it. You're on the phone. You're with your dad. You're in the drive through You know, whatever it is. I get it. Okay? Um, if you go a whole day without calling me back. Oh, no. That's not going to happen. Can we promise each other we'll answer the phone? Yeah. Like, I'm not going a day. Like, if, if, I'm with, if I'm with my dad or, like, I have other calls coming in, like, I'm okay. getting back to you. Okay. There's no, yeah. Okay. Your dad's coming tomorrow. Were you guys planning on staying here? Oh yeah, like he's gonna stay at my house. Like okay. that, that was the thing. Like I don't want to be in that house by myself. Okay. That's why I'm staying with my friends tonight. Okay. Because I can't be right. in that house again. Like, Have you already packed for your friends tonight? I got it in my car. Okay. I was, I, I was actually about almost there when I was calling. Me. I was like, okay. yeah, I'll turn around. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you're good. I was like, I'd rather okay. get this rolling right here. Sorry. All right. Um, I hope you realize I'm someone that you can call and trust and again I put the screws to you but that's because I need to. I know. Okay. You did a really good job tonight. Yeah. Okay. Um do you have any other questions for me? No. Just okay. You gotta find these two and my wife. I'll show you the other picture on my phone. Okay. Let me go see where they are Let me go see where they are with the phone. Okay. And then we're gonna um if you're gonna go to your friend's house then we might not include you very much at the house at your house. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to leave you alone for the night, but if we get somewhere, um, if we can't get in the house, if we find something we got to talk to you about tonight, I can't wait. Yeah, I'll have my again. Okay. okay. All right. Anything else? Just try to find them. Oh, okay. I didn't know I know. Um, I appreciate you coming in tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. Good news. Thank you. I'm going to get rid of that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for letting us use your phone. No problem. Um, so we're trying to figure this out um, without sending you home with a bunch of questions, right? Yeah. So we'd like to be able to tell you this is our plan for tomorrow. So so far it looks like um, 
some of the things we need to do with your house are better at night and some are better in the morning. So we're, we're going to probably split the difference and start very early in the morning. Um, now, between now and very early is probably about three, four hours, right? Okay. Um, if it's possible for you to not go home during that time to your house, okay. can you go straight to your friend's? I'm going to show my friend's right here. Okay. And then when you go straight to your friend's house, um, is it okay to ask that you don't go back to your house? You just call me and give me a word. I'm going to say, okay. So we'd like to be able to, I don't want to do two searches at your house. Because that will say to the public, oh boy, the FBI is really interested in him. And then it's going to be a storm coming at you that we don't want. Okay. So we'll do that. We're going to send you home, go to your friend's house, do a good night's sleep. Um, pick up your dad at 8 or 9? Yeah. Just okay. to verify with you. He's at like 5 and Eastern morning. time. You already had the ticket? Yeah. Do you know when he's flying in? Like what he's flying in on or the company? Or I told him to go to United Airlines. It was cheaper, but I'm not okay. sure because it kept price kept changing on him. He bought his ticket? Yeah. Okay. What's his name? Ronnie Watts. Ronnie Watts. Okay. Um, so we'll send you to your friend's house. You know, again, I can't tell you. You cannot go in your house, but I'd like you to not go in your house. Um, if you can do that, and then we'll start early in the morning. I'll check in with you at around eight or nine. Okay. Um, you'll probably be on your way to the airport if not already there. And then, can you after that? Can you just come straight here? Yeah. Let's let's talk. Let's get everything out of the way. Let's get done with your search, and then we're just gonna, you know, send you on your way, and we'll be back to this Chris, the good Chris, right? Okay. Um, I'm sorry, you have to go through all this. It's part of the process. Okay. So you guys can stay in my house overnight, or? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. Um, and, but actually, yes. <laughs> okay. They would. There will be someone at your house. Okay. Uh, there will be a patrol officer in the front and in the back. Um, and then, yeah, they're going to make sure. Well, and the reason is we don't want anyone else going to your house either. Okay. Some nosy reporter, some nosy neighbor. Some the reporters will be there because they they're just, they're just cycling and doing some yeah. Yeah. spots here. And right. There. Yeah. So, but we also want to make sure that they're not sticking a camera in your window and you know, doing some sort of weird piece about your house and your home and so yeah, there'll be we'll make sure that no one else gets in there. Um, and yeah, and if you do need to go to your house, don't go without telling us. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to get pig piled by a bunch of patrol officers. Um does that does that all sound yeah. good? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um give me two more minutes and then we'll walk out. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Oh, do your girls do you have, do your girls travel with headphones? They had they had them on the first trip there, but I didn't see them wearing one back. What they look like? Like little little unicorn type things. Over like, the ear? Yeah, they're like they like kind of slide over. Okay. Were they like colorful? They're gray, gray and pink, I think. Do they ever take them shopping or anything? No. No, no that's the only time they ever used them. Oh, okay. So if your if your uh, wife was gonna like walk around with them, she would be holding them with headphones. No, because they just strap over and they have a little plug. Okay. Um, is your family lactose intolerant? No. Do you ever buy a lactose intolerant milk? Just two percent. Just two percent regular stuff. Okay. All right. Um, we're just exploring. Mean, you can imagine a thousand people are calling in right now, so we're just narrowing stuff down. Okay. Give me two more minutes. All right. Hey, Chris. Thanks um, for coming in. Yep. Um, so we've been doing some other things while you were here. Um, and we got people calling in. So okay. Like that. So there was a, a sighting at Walmart. Um, one of your kiddos is Bella the oldest. Yes. Does she have long hair. Well, if, if you let the curls down. How long? So it, it, the curls would probably come like right here. Okay. So this is a picture from your surveillance. You see that? Yeah. It's just, the hair color looks a little off. Mm -hmm. I mean, look how long that braid is. Is that yeah. right? Is that look right? No, that braid's too long. Is that your wife? Hair is too long. Okay. okay. I'll start that too. Okay. So that hair looks a little too long. I'll try it, buddy. Sure. We are trying. Very angle. Yeah. That would be she's in the back, though. <laughs> that was her. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's where she would sit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chilling. Bella rolling the roof, that thing? Yes. Most time, just something in there, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because Bella is really. Uh, 
That's the picture I was going to look And this is CC, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I saw the to lie. Yeah, this is not much different, but it's got a lot more hair. Yeah. yeah. A lot more hair. Okay. okay, great. Thank All you. Right. All right, we're ready. Do I have to take this or no? This is. Uh, please leave all that. Yeah. yeah. So when you're um, when you're getting your dad tomorrow, just come on in. He's gonna have a bunch of questions. I'll talk to everyone. Bring him in. Let's talk. Can I bring him here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. You, you, you can drop my word. Okay. But you don't even want to hear about it. And you can go for it. Okay. Okay. All right.